You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, BB fans. Today, we're going to do a video on how Big Brother is using technology to level out the playing field for their historic casting move, bringing in someone into the house that is hearing impaired. Matt Klotz is making history as the first deaf player on Big Brother. Of course, that's currently on the show's 25th season and... Just real quick, a little background on Matt. Nobody else in his family is deaf. He revealed in an interview with a website called deafpeople.com. The website name says it all. So he did an interview with them about Big Brother and the stuff that he's dealing with. Matt Klotz said, I was just born this way and said it was before they did universal hearing screening on newborns. So his parents didn't know that he was deaf until he was two. That's wild. And he learned to read lips at a young age. And then when he finally got hearing aids, he said he was able to hear his parents' voices for the very first time. That had to have been incredible. I've had some friends that had hearing loss for most of their lives, and then they got cochlear implants. And it's amazing what they say when they finally get to hear for the first time. So I can only imagine that he was thrilled and his parents were thrilled. So just for the record, with his hearing aids on, Matt is not totally deaf, but he also doesn't hear the same way that other house guests do. And that can be problematic in a game where whispering is par for the course when plotting and where a lot of the cues for things are only verbal and are not spoken from an actual person in front of him that he could read lips for. So, of course, Matt is also not new to challenges. He swam for Team USA and broke world records at the Deaf Olympics. He holds five gold medals and several silver and bronzes across three different events, the 50 meter, the 100 meter, and the 200 meter backstroke. That tiny pull in the Big Brother backyard is not giving him the workout that he's used to. I think it's, I don't even know if it's five meters. It is such a small pull. So when Big Brother picked Matt as a house guest, they had to think long and hard about how to make it fair for him while at the same time not giving him unfair advantages. And they started working early on on how to develop some accommodations because they knew once he started the casting process that they were very interested in having him. They liked him a lot. They knew they would be breaking barriers with this. Executive producer Allison Grodner said, Matt's a great athlete and loves the game. He's also here to show people what life is like for him and others who can't hear well or can't hear at all. And we're happy to help him do that. So CBS just really wanted Matt to be playing on a level field. Fortunately, Matt is not 100% deaf. There are certain acoustical ranges he can hear better than others, and he wears hearing aids to boost those sounds. But his hearing loss is so severe that he is considered legally deaf, the same way that a person is considered legally blind, but they can see shades of light, shades of gray, blurry images, but they are legally blind. It is definitely a thing where, you know, without your glasses, when you're legally blind, without your hearing aids, when you're legally deaf, the world's kind of a mystery to you. And especially playing in competitions, I cannot even imagine. Fans kind of notice that Matt has some level of hearing ability when he played competitions that required listening to sounds. And also when people have been exiting the Big Brother house, sometimes they'll hug him and say things like right in his ear. And it looks like he's nodding his head like he understands. And as long as they're speaking into an ear and there's not a lot of other background noise and things, it looks like he is able to hear some of these things. Plus, CBS was able to tap into modern technology to help Matt out in the game to kind of raise him to the same audiological level that the other players have. So some of the changes production made were in the BB Diary Room and, of course, for certain comps. And before the show even started, the BB team got ready for him 
him. So they were trying to figure out how to do things, but they couldn't do it just off the cuff. They had to plan it. So that's very interesting because they gave him access to the house early. And I'm going to talk about that and talk about why it did not give him a leg up. If you know a lot about Big Brother, if you're a longtime watcher, a lot of the game, you know, relies on production sending sounds and announcements to the house guests over the speakers in the house. You know, you'll hear that house guest go to the backyard, you know, so-and-so go to the diary room. So the problem with the diary room, first of all, is that the players are sitting in a glorified closet and there is not a video monitor. There's a camera pointed at them and there are speakers and then there's microphones. And they're talking into that speaker and they're responding to things that they hear production say to them, Big Brother saying to them. So in the diary room, Matt can't read lips because the voice is just that. It's strictly audio. At the same time, though, they couldn't just crank up the volume to where he could hear it or others outside the DR would hear what's being said to him. So it's this fine line of trying to make things fair for Matt while not accidentally giving an advantage to other players with these accommodations, nor to give an advantage to Matt himself. So the very first thing they did was to try out some new sound gear. Before the game started, they brought Matt into the house, but they blindfolded him so he didn't get to see anything, and they just kind of escorted him around. So he was literally in the dark when all this happened. That way they could do tests, but without giving him a leg up. So they took him out into the backyard to see where the speakers were placed out there, how loud they were. They took him into the DR, and that was a tough one to figure out production said because he can't read lips and can't see the producers and they couldn't just make everything louder to get up to the level that his hearing aids would pick up. So David Crivelli, I hope I'm saying his name right, is the main tech guy on the show, explained a little bit. He said, the diary room is where you share private stuff. We can't let any sound go from there out into the living room. You know, that's where the DR door is. And if we made it louder for Matt, then other players will hear through the walls what's being said, and that wouldn't be fair to Matt or to the game. So to fix this, the first thing they did was they basically tried to soundproof the room. They sealed up the gaps around the doors and other efforts so that sound couldn't get out. And then they installed this special speaker right above Matt's head. So it sends sound right to Matt at a frequency they tested and knows is best for him. And the speaker placement is very focused to get the sounds to him, to penetrate through his hearing aids, but not leave the room. And then Matt also got to experiment with an array of voice audio options they offered to select the best one for him. So Allison Grodner said they talked to Matt's hearing doctor, his audiologist, to find out what tones and sound levels that he best hears because everyone hears differently. Interestingly, they found out that things at a deeper register, a deeper voice is easier for him to hear. So they did accommodate that way. So he's not getting the exact same voice that the other players are, although he's getting all the same information. So finding the right voice and the right speaker and the speaker placement was just one step. And then they also found a new way or developed a new way to turn voice to text. So there's a screen in the DR format that shows what production, what Big Brother is saying in text. And that's not the only spot with a a screen. The audio engineer, Crivelli, said, we thought about where else we'd need to give Matt notes from the producers. So they put screens in a few other places and they use them as they need to. So it's not as easy as it sounds, though, and things can definitely go wrong. The BB engineer said, it's risky for Big Brother. We have to make sure text meant only for Matt from the producers goes to a screen that only Matt can see and not in any of the other rooms because they don't want to give away secrets. Not that they're giving Matt secrets, but things, you know, in the DR, when they talk to you, it's very specific to you. And so... They just have to be really, really careful. 
So they also said they have a really careful system to make sure that when the voice gets turned to text, it goes to the right screen. But then there was another risk when developing the voice to tech because there's so much going on with the producers that are talking to him. They're trying to pick up from their mics and what they're saying, but they also get all these other sounds and noises from other producers and people. And so they wanted to make sure that nothing got transcribed to text that shouldn't. David Crivelli said, we wear headsets all the time. We talk while listening to what's happening in the house. So their mic, the concern is that it was picking up the right stuff and not the wrong stuff, and they didn't want the tech to mess up and write down things that it's hearing from the headsets and not just things they're saying. So if that happened, you know, there's some secrets that could end up on screen for Matt and other players to see this. So they have to be real careful. And then, of course, another huge thing was the competitions. So rules for the comps show up as text on a screen for everybody now, even when Julie Chen Moonves is talking to players about how the comp plays. If you look, for instance, at the Nether Gorgon HOH comp, you could see players reading the rules off the screen. So then there's concerns with what happens during the actual comp once they made the rules where everybody could digest them. So the voice to text technology is super fast. And the engineer said, it shows words on the screen, like right after someone says them, it takes half a second. It's really quick, but that's not quick enough for some parts of certain comps, particularly the starting signal. David Crivelli said, if Julie or Big Brother yells go, or there's a buzzer that sounds to start the comp, they can't use the voice to text because he would start later, like a split second later, which matters due to the delay, and that's not fair to him. So what they did is they got a special speaker also for the comps. And depending on where he's placed at during the comp, they move the speaker around and it's pointed at him and they set it at that good sound level for him, both the volume and the voice. And then they tested it out with him in the backyard and it works. So he, they would do uh, sounds and then he would raise his hand. And so he could tell it, tell them what was better, what was worse. So The biggest challenge, though, for him was that comp, Twisted Tasks. That one had so many sounds as clues. Remember, it was a veto comp set in a 90s music store that was in the scramble verse. Players went in one by one, and they found three record players, and they put on headphones. And each record had a clue they had to listen to. And then they put the clues together to get their result. So Allison Grodner said they move from one record player to the next and they have it play like a DJ does to hear the clue right. It's all about listening. And of course, that sounds really tough for a deaf person. So they figured out how to make things more fair. Allison Grodner said before he knew about that game, we had Matt try different voices. We wanted to make sure he could hear and know which voice was giving the clue. And they did that so he'd have a fair shot in the veto comp. And it took a few tries to get it right. The engineer said we made questions with different sounds and played them for him. And he finally picked the one that worked best. And then we set the sound for him based on what he hears best. And then everyone got that same sound and voice in the game. So that was what they did to ensure he didn't have an advantage is they set the audio level for him, but it would obviously work for anyone that was not hearing impaired. So everybody got the exact same thing. And, you know, they also are real careful in how they give things to map. Uh, Crivelli said noise makes it really hard for people with hearing issues to focus. Even with hearing aids, It's tough to tell where a sound is coming from, and they can't fix that. But what they do is they try to take away extra background noise to help him not have that audio lack of focus. So they fixed that by getting noise-canceling headphones that worked with his hearing aids, which is not as simple as it sounds. The engineer said, when you cover up hearing aids, 
you know, they can make a loud noise. They can give like feedback and stuff. So they had to find headphones that wouldn't interfere with his hearing aids, but that would help block out some of that outside noise. And then they had to make sure that both pieces of the tech, his hearing aids and the headphones worked well together. Interestingly enough, Matt didn't have a problem with the hearing part of that comp. The problem was that he wasn't familiar with the names of the instrument used in the game. I mean, that makes sense. A deaf person isn't probably going to be in band. They don't know what different musical instruments are just because it's not in the realm of things that they interact with, you know. So what does Matt Klotz think of all this? Allison Grodner said he lets us know if something isn't working, but he's not the type to keep asking for help. So we check in with him a lot. We ask him to tell us what's good and what's not, and we want him to speak up for himself. So that's kind of interesting that I'm sure in his day-to-day life, he just powers through even when there's not an accommodation for him. And so they were trying to be careful and they're trying to get him to advocate for himself where he usually might not ask for something. So that's kind of interesting. And they said that some of the things that happened did catch production by surprise, like in the HOH comp revenge of the pressure cooker, you know, the lights went off and on. And the first time the lights went out, Matt said, you know, great, now I can't hear or see. And production quickly realized, you know, he can't read lips in the dark. So he was missing out on the conversations in the room and that could put him at a disadvantage. But the bottom line was CBS just wants to give Matt their first hearing disabled, differently abled house guest a fair shot and they're they're trying their best and it's obviously an ongoing process. All right, so I want to talk about one quick thing, and that's about a house guest taking advantage of his disability. Hey, if you haven't already, please reach down and subscribe so you don't miss any of our Bolt updates, and definitely drop your comments on what you think about the accommodations that were made for Matt Klotz. So some fans are feeling like that some players might be taking advantage of Matt's disability. I mean, if you think about it and, you know, you can literally whisper right on top of him, probably there are things you can do and make sure that he can't, you know, see your face. So for instance, recently, you remember Jared was caught in that big fat lie and he threw Matt under the bus and said, Matt must have heard him wrong because he's deaf. Uh, To be clear, When Jared was lying, Matt repeated more than once exactly what Jared said to him. And in the private conversation between Matt and Jared, Matt repeated back to him what he was saying. And Jared confirmed, yeah, you heard me right. So Matt did not misunderstand him. He was very clear. And then in front of everybody else, Jared was trying to gaslight him. And Matt later told Blue that Jared is trying to take advantage of his deafness all the time. So this was an incident that made it on camera, but it sounds like there's other similar incidences from Jared. For me, it looks like Matt Klotz is definitely a role model for those who are differently abled, but that want to play Big Brother and maybe... Maybe they'll be able to make some other accommodations to let other people play that might not have been able to play before. And it also seems to me like production went far enough, but not too far to level the playing field while not giving Matt any advantages. But as for Jared taking advantage of someone's handicap, not even taking advantage that, but also using it against him. You know, that's not something that Big Brother can do anything about. But maybe once Jared is out of the house and back in the real world, he'll face a reckoning from the deaf community for targeting and using someone's handicap against them. To me, personally, in my humble opinion, that seems to be above and beyond acceptable gameplay. But let me know what you think in the comments. Come back soon for more on Big Brother. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode.
Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. 